You're watching Alabama's WVUA News at 5. You're watching Alabama's WVUA News at 5 with your award-winning news team, Lynn Brooks, Terry Brewer, weather with Richard Scott, and sports with Gary Harris. Coming up home team weather watching the very latest on Tropical Storm Isaac. It's moves towards the Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana coast, the impact anyway. We'll talk more about the forecast coming up in a bit. Stick around. People all across the Gulf Coast are preparing for Tropical Storm Isaac. We have complete coverage from West Alabama to the coast. And the countdown is on for the road to 15. Tide fans speak out on what they're looking forward to this season. We're glad you're with us tonight. I'm Lynn Brooks. And I am Terry Brewer. Up first tonight, the threat of Tropical Storm Isaac. That's right. People all along the Gulf Coast now bracing for the impact of the storm. Is there a possibility West Alabama may also be affected? Chief Meteorologist Richard Scott is monitoring the situation and joins us with the latest. Hi, Richard. Hey, Lynn Terry. Watching things very closely, our beach camera that, down towards the Gulf Coast as well. Things getting very active down towards the south. And here is Isaac. A very troublemaker we're watching close, and that is becoming a well-defined tropical storm about to become a hurricane. Probably the next advisory will see that happen. Wind sustained 70, now gust 86, moving off towards the north and west. Expected to become a Category 2 storm before moving inland sometime late Tuesday night or early Wednesday morning, and then it's going to cut off towards the north, kind of long and west of the Mississippi River. I will be on the east flank of that storm, so we're expecting heavy rain, isolated tornadoes in our area. Now, when's that going to happen? Here's what we expect over the next several days. Tuesday evening through Thursday night, gusty winds, very heavy rain, flooding issues are possible. Also, the threat for isolated tornadoes across all of west and central Alabama. We'll talk much more about your forecast, plus we'll look ahead towards the weekend, have some better news coming up in weather. Stick around. Thanks a lot, Richard. And while people in Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana are bracing for Isaac, it's already causing some problems for people in southern Florida. And that's right. As Eugene Ramirez reports, work crews have their hands full picking up after the storm. The cleanup after the storm, public works crews out in Broward and Miami-Dade counties assessing damage and cleaning up the mess left behind by gusty winds. Trees down, sidewalks that may have been damaged due to root rise from a tree that may have toppled over. Uh, the palm fronds in the roadways trying to get those cleared off. Uh, little things like that. Sometimes not so little. On La Playa Boulevard in Miami, a Mercedes S-Class on the move smashed by this huge Royal Pointiana. Police say the driver wasn't injured, but the tree, uprooted and splintered, couldn't be spared. And a sea grape tree in Miami Beach would have the same fate. The tree on 39th and Collins split, toppling over onto the road. And an umbrella finding an unusual resting place lodged inside this tree turned inside out also on Miami Beach. A coconut palm has been pushed to the side and we red taped it. Multiple trees down in Hollywood, crews clearing fallen palms off roads and saving whatever they can. There's a bird, I noticed a bird up there, that's one of the things we look at, uh, obstructions, uh, uh, animals, any birds up in the tree that may have a nest in there, we don't want to, we don't want to disrupt their, their habitat. The tree spared, soon to be propped back up, this little guy won't be evicted. Meanwhile, here in Alabama, Governor Bentley warned residents today the sunny skies on the coast may give a false sense of security. That's right. He said people do not need to become complacent as Isaac approaches the Gulf Coast. Governor Bentley declared a state of emergency to make sure people had time to get out. He also ordered a mandatory evacuation of low-lying areas in Mobile and Baldwin counties on Sunday night. Bentley said the National Guard is on standby. The governor said he and emergency officials are doing what they can to help keep everyone safe. What we're trying to do is protect the lives of the people of this area. Everything else is secondary, uh, but the lives and the safety of the people of this area are, are most important. There is a mandatory evacuation in Baldwin County for Zones 1 and 2. Zones 1 being uh, mostly the Pleasure Island, Zone 2 being south of Foley, wrapping around to the both to the Lillian area and also to the uh, to the eastern shore, which would be west of Highway 98. Emergency responders across West Alabama have been busy getting ready to face possible effects of Tropical Storm Isaac.
According to Holly Maxwell with the American Red Cross, they began organizing volunteers as early as last week. Maxwell also saying 27 emergency response vehicles are already en route to Montgomery. Those are stocked up with food, water, and cleanup kits. Maxwell says the rest, the, the Red Cross of West Alabama is preparing to open a shelter in Tuscaloosa for evacuees, but may open additional shelters if they become necessary. Of course, we do know, um, even though we may not be directly impacted by the eye of the hurricane, should it become a hurricane, we still could potentially experience those heavy storms, spin off tornadoes. To stay up to date and prepared for the storm, you can find a link to the American Red Cross Hurricane app for your smartphone. Find that on our website, WVUATV.com. Click Numbers and Links. Meanwhile, Amtrak is temporarily suspending its service to and from New Orleans Tuesday and Wednesday because of Isaac. Officials say no alternate transportation would be available to and from New Orleans. Passengers who have paid but chose not to travel due to the, dis di due to the disruption can receive a refund or a voucher. To get information, the number to call 800-USA-RAIL. And certainly Alabama, not the only state making preparations for Isaac. That's right. Thousands of people in Louisiana and Mississippi are also being told to leave their Gulf Coast homes. Forecasters say Isaac is gaining strength as it follows the same path Hurricane Katrina took seven years ago. The governors of Louisiana and Mississippi have also declared a state of emergency. Today, the mayor of New Orleans issued a warning for residents of the city, and the governor of Mississippi said residents need to act now. Our concern is that residents may decide to wait till later Tuesday night or Wednesday to start leaving uh, or uh, moving from the area. Uh, that would put you in the dark in perhaps 60 mile an hour winds in the rain. Uh, those are not the conditions that you want uh, to move your family forward. We will take whatever precautions we need to protect people, um, but unfortunately people hear that the wrong way and they don't make provisions for themselves and other families and then we get into the situations that we had during Katrina and Rita. We do not want to do that again and so uh, the shelters of last resort do not exist for the Superdome and the Convention Center. Tropical Storm Isaac has now been blamed for 19 deaths in Haiti. Meanwhile in Tampa, the Republican National Convention officially opened but then it was put on recess. That's right. It was put on hold due to Tropical Storm Isaac. Today was supposed to mark the first big day of the convention for Republicans, but Isaac pushed back the start of real business until Tuesday. The worst of the storm should miss Tampa, but Isaac is headed toward the Gulf Coast on, of course, the seventh anniversary of Hurricane Katrina's landfall. Convention activities are expected to pick back up tomorrow. On your West Alabama election watch, Northport's city elections. Voters will head to the polls tomorrow to decide who will lead the city. Now here's a look at who's in the race for Mayor Incumbent Mayor Bobby Herndon, former Mayor Harvey Fretwell, Frank Chandler, and Robert Thomas. For City Council District 1, Judy Hayes and Jeff Thompson. For City Council District 2, Tyrone Alexander, incumbent Jay Logan and Emmanuel Jenkins. District 3, Chuck Gerdo and Rodney Sullivan. District 4, incumbent Steve Acker and Woodrow Washington. And for District 5, incumbent Bart Harper and Jeff Hogg. Polls open at 7 a.m. If you need information about where to vote, you can call this number 205-339-7000. The other big story we're following, of course, change of pace, is the road <laughs> to 15. That's right. we got to have some football. Absolutely. Uh, the Crimson Tide football season officially kicks off this Saturday, unless you've been under a rock. Mm -hmm. And here's our countdown. Five days, one hour, 51 minutes, oh, 50 minutes and 58, 57, so many seconds until Bama hits the gridiron against the Michigan Wolverines. That game is in Arlington, Texas in Cowboy Stadium. It kicks off at 7 p.m. and is televised on ABC. Now, earlier today, UA students crowded into the ticket office to get their tickets. The first students in line actually got there last night. They want these tickets pretty bad. And when ticket windows open at 8 a.m., the line was wrapped all around Coleman Coliseum with students still coming in the doors. Student told us they are looking forward to the new season and they're excited about this weekend's big game. I'm excited about going to Dallas this weekend. It's going to be a fun time. We had to get up early this morning, but it was worth it. I got Missouri and Tennessee.
I was up here at 6.45, live in Dallas, can't wait, got 20 people staying in my house, I'm so excited. A lot of people are so excited, and WVUA is the place to start your football Saturdays. Don't miss Crimson Tide kickoff starting this Saturday, September 1st, 8 a.m. Gary Harris will have complete game day coverage. He will have all your game breakdowns, feature stories, and much more on Crimson Tide kickoff coming up this Saturday. Be sure and join us here on Alabama's home team station. And while we're talking about football, this Friday is the first big Friday night for high school football. Alabama's home team is the place for all your football action. Join Gary Harris and the entire WVUA sports crew for all the highlights from West Alabama's biggest games. That starts at 1035, immediately following our 10 p.m. news.